next on Street Smarts. It'll be up to these two to determine who's smart as a fox and who's dumb as an ox. What's a screenplay? A show on TV where they're putting on the screen. The Phantom Menace is the first part of what famous series? Uh, Phantom of the Opera. How do our players measure up? How many years are in a century? Oh my God, you've been done! Gee, can it be like a thousand? No. <laughs> Street Smarts. Think you've got them? Find out now. search for average citizens and tested their street smarts by asking basic questions about the world around them. It will be up to our players to determine who's smart as a fox and who's dumb as an ox. And speaking of players, let's meet him. We have Tatu. Woo! How pretty is she, guys? But don't forget Thomas. We got Thomas. Now, guys, it's winner take all here on Street Smarts. The winner keeps the cash. The loser loses their stash. Loser. Now, let's meet the three people they'll be making snap judgments about. First, I'm not sure whether Sarah performed a scene from Superstar or a phone sex call. So Sarah, what do you do here in San Francisco? I am a waitress, like everyone else. Okay. Well. Show me on this microphone the scene from a Superstar that you love. We're like, oh, baby, baby, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to leave you now. Oh, don't be that way. Don't be that way. We're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What three words best describe you? Um, spunky, spunky, and run there. <laughs> You're horny right now? I'm always horny, baby. I'm ready to romp. I'm gonna look like such an ass on TV. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Then I learned how Freddy Spaghetti takes the bull by the horn. <laughs> Fred, where are you from and what do you do? Sacramento, California. I work for hotels here in Sacramento. Doing what? Um, I'm a restaurateur. Why do they call you Freddy Spaghetti? Because I'm always ready. And Spaghetti's always ready? Hey. Fred, do you think you could ride the bull? Which one? The, the animal, the bull. Yes, I can. <laughs> and finally, a uh, common mistake. Little Susie mistook me for John Travolta. So Susie, where are you from and what do you do? Oh, I'm from Modesto, California, and I'm retired. Susie, it's very hot out here. We just sprayed you down with a water bottle. <laughs> Last time that happened to you, you said you were stone drunk. Oh, God, what am I supposed to say now? That's true. Okay. Stone drunk. If you could marry someone famous, who would it be? Oh, I, I like John Travolta, oh. truly. You know, a lot of people tell me I look like John Travolta. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Where? You look good, Frank. Yeah. Little Frank. Mm -hmm. Little Frank, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, guys, it's time to play a little game we like to call Who Knew It? We ask the same question all three people in the field, and our players challenge is a guess who answered the question right. They're going to lock in their choice, and a correct guess is going to get them 100 bucks. Yeah. Okay, guys, let's get it on. Here's the first question I asked Sarah, Fred, and Susie. In pounds, how much meat does a panda bear usually eat in a day? So flip it up, guys, and tell me who knew it. Do you think Sarah, Fred, or Susie knew how much meat a panda bear eats in a day? All right, and Thomas is almost ready. Looks, okay, you guys are locked in, and we got a Fred, we got a Susie, a little difference of opinion going on here. All right, now, uh, Tatu, you think Fred knows. I think Fred knows because he's a wild man. Oh my yeah, God. All right, let's see if he can get you 100 bucks. In pounds, how much meat does a panda bear usually eat in a day? Uh, probably about 25. Um, they're big. Yeah, they're big. You gotta eat a lot of meat. Yeah, how much meat do you- There's not that many of them, so uh, you know what? Eat as much as you can, because you're gonna be exist no matter what. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, that's a wrong oh, answer. Bad. He didn't know the answer, Tatu. Now, now, Thomas, you think Susie's gonna know, huh? I'm gonna say Susie, because I think she eats as much as a panda bear, so I think she knows. <laughs> okay, all right. In pounds, how much meat does a panda bear usually eat in a day? Oh, 500 pounds. They eat a lot, they're big. Lots, big. That's a wrong answer too, Thomas. I'm sorry, Susie didn't know that. Be nice for Susie. For the correct answer, we're gonna go way down here to Sarah. In pounds, how much meat does a panda bear usually eat in a day? None, they don't eat meat. Uh, see, we tried to trick you. You all guys are Sarah. So well, we couldn't get it by Sarah. No, no, they eat bamboo. <laughs> That's right, Sarah's right. Uh, the answer is usually none. They don't eat meat. A panda bear's diet is typically 99% bamboo. Okay, guys, here's the next question of the round. I asked all three of them, what is the product Roundup used for? So who knew it? Sarah, Fred, or Susie knew what Roundup is for? Thomas is <laughs> shrugging his shoulders. No. That's okay, there's no pressure on you now. There's no dunce cap quite yet. Okay, you guys are locked in. We have a Susie, we have a friend. Now, Tatu, you think uh, Susie knows? Yeah, I think Susie knows because I don't know. I don't know myself what right, it's, it's for. Okay, but let's find know. out. See if she does for you. Hundred bucks on the line. What is the product Roundup used for? 
killing weeds. <laughs> That's a right answer. There you go, Captain. It's uh, 100 bucks for you. Nice job. Now, Thomas, we're going to see if Fred knows for you, see if we can tie the game up. What is the product Roundup used for? <laughs> to rope up cows. To rope up cows? Yes. Good product? <laughs> yes, it is. That's a wrong answer, Thomas. I'm sorry. Fred didn't know the answer there. Uh, just for fun, let's see what Sarah had to say. We like her. What is the product Roundup used for? Roundup? Mm -hmm. um, some sort of rope-like device, I imagine. Round them up! <laughs> Do you ever use rope for anything other than rounding people up? Um, they're good for binding people to any sort of bedposts. <laughs> okay! That's why we like to check in with Sarah once in a while. Here's the last question of the round, guys. Thomas, we're going to see if we can get to some money here. Uh, we asked all three, what's a screenplay? All right, who knew it, guys? I think you guys know that one, so let's see here. Okay, you guys are pretty quick on that. You guys are locked in. And you both want to go with Sarah. You guys think, you know, think she might know what's going on. Before we show it, let's see what Susie had to say for fun. What's a screenplay? TV. What do you mean TV? A show on TV where they're putting on TV, where they're putting on the screen. What's your favorite comedy game show? <laughs> oh, Street Smart. There you go. All right, it took her a second. All right, now, Thomas, you think Sarah's going to get this? Yeah, I All think right. she... I think Sarah's gonna get it because she, you know, she's, she's in movies. All right, I let's think. find out. <laughs> What's a screenplay? It's the thing that you use in a movie to read what you're supposed to say. Okay. What's your favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time? Oh my God, that is so hard. I would say Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh. There's lots of drugs involved. Burp, Charlie, burp. Uh. <laughs> you guys both had Sarah. Way to go. hundred dollars for each of you. Thomas, you have hundred dollars to get around yeah, one. The tattoos yeah. got two hundred dollars. From who knew it to who blew it when we come back. Who was Harry Truman? Wait a minute, was that the guy that was stuck in his own TV show? The Truman Show? Yeah. Jim Carrey. Born, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was born into his own TV show. Right, so the buck stops here. I'm coming out to admit that this is a uh, TV show. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's meet our players. Now we have Tattoo here. Now, Tattoo, uh, tell us about taking your brother on a trip to L.A. I had to spend three and a half hours on the bus trying to get to L.A., another two hours in the station waiting for a guy that never showed up. It ended up being a seven-hour trip for a burger and some fries, at which point we turned around, and I had to spend the entire trip home sitting next to an ex-convict named One-Eyed Billy. Right. I will never and, ride the bus again. And, and how are you and Billy doing now? Forget your friend. Okay. <laughs> All right, now, Thomas, uh, what happened to you working at a hotel one night? Well, this I was, was excellent. I was doing a routine room, ch routine room check and uh, opened up the door, and I looked, uh, looked down, and I saw some people going at it. <laughs> <laughs> looked up, saw that they were videotaping it, quickly shut the door, ran back downstairs, had to tell someone. I told our maintenance guy. Yeah. We both had a good laugh. So let's just say now that when I check rooms, I'm a little bit more cautious. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Dude, walk in on that. Be like, hello, towels. All right. Okay. Hey, guys, thanks for being here. It's time to get our second win as we start our next round. Who blew it? <laughs> same question for only two of our test dummies. One answered right, one answered wrong. Each time Tattoo or Thomas correctly identifies who blew the question, they get 200 bucks. 200. 200 bucks. And you can earn an extra $200 by using the dunce cap. Here's how. That's when you hear a question you think will befuddle your opponent, swap the buzzer on your chair and dunce them. If they cannot answer the question, you get $200. And remember, there's only one dunce in the round, so don't get crazy with the buzzer. All right, guys? Yeah. Here's the first question I asked to both Fred and to Susie. How many years are in a century? Oh my God, you've been done. Tattoo, throw the thing up there, Thomas. Thomas, I don't know if this was a smart idea. 200 bucks on the line. Uh, if you don't get this, Thomas will get the money. Tattoo, I'm gonna read it again. Five seconds to answer the question. How many years are in a century? Gee, could it be like a thousand? No. <laughs> That's a wrong answer. I'm sorry, you should have left that on. Yeah! Flip up your paddle, it's all right. And tell me who blew it like you just did, Fred or Susie? Oh man, who blew it, Fred or Susie? Oh, that was classic. That'll be on our best of reel. All right. That was okay. that smart, huh? You guys are both locked in. Let's see if Fred blew it for both of you. How many years are in a century? 25. Hey, that's a wrong answer. Fred blew it, you both get $200. Uh, the correct answer is uh, 100, 100. I know. 100. Okay. I know. <laughs> All right. Here's the question I asked to Sarah and to Fred. I asked them both, if a man tells you he has a woodpecker, what does he have? 
So who blew that one, Sarah or Fred? <laughs> Thomas has got a slight lead using that dunce very wisely, as we all <laughs> thought he wasn't using it. But uh, OK, you guys are locked in. We have a Sarah, we have a Fred. Now, Thomas, you think Fred blew this? I say Fred's going to blow it, because okay. I, I don't even know what it, he, I, he doesn't let's even know what out. a woodpecker all right, is. Let's see if he blew it. If a man tells you he has a woodpecker, what does he have? <laughs> a bird that's wasting too much time in wood. <laughs> that's a correct answer. I'm oh, sorry, man. Thomas. Fred got that right. Tattoo, it looks like Sarah's the one who blew it. Let's watch, guys. If a man tells you he has a woodpecker, what does he have? <laughs> He's got what I like, baby. <laughs> Which is? Which is something that goes down below. Oh, oh damn, she missed it. Way to go, Tattoo Star. Yeah, Sarah missed it. You're up to $600. Yeah. Mm. OK, here's the last question of the round, guys. This one was to Fred and to Susie. I asked both of them, who did Paul Allen partner with to create Microsoft? So who blew it? Do you think Fred or Susie didn't know this one? Tattoo just took a lead on you there, Thomas. So of course, you could have a bigger lead if she didn't miss the uh, century question. All right, uh, you both think, you're locked in, you both think Fred blew it. Let's find out if he did. Who did Paul Allen partner with to create Microsoft? John Glenathan. John Glenathan? Mm -hmm. Bill Gates. Oh, really? Well, if you knew the answer, why didn't you just tell me? <laughs> you both had Freddie Blue. Way to go, guys. Another $200 for each of you. And uh, for a correct answer, the correct answer is uh, it's Bill Gates. Like I said, Susie's the one who knew that one. Okay, guys, let's recap the scores. Thomas, you got $700. The tattoo, even with the century blunder, has $800. for the entire round and try to guess how they'll answer three questions. The correct prediction is worth 300 bucks. Yeah, and we're gonna leave the dunce cap in this round. It can only be used once and it's worth another $300. Yeah, I know, it's not too, it's a sore subject. Now, the player who is trailing chooses first, Thomas, that's you. So who would you like to pony up with? I'm gonna pony up with Fred. No hesitation, he's going with Fred. Tattoo, how about you? I'm gonna take Sarah. Go with Sarah, okay, very good. Woo! Thomas, here's the first question to Fred. You're trailing by 100 bucks, correct prediction will put you in the lead. I asked Fred, The Phantom Menace is the first part of what famous series? <laughs> okay, you've been fast. Bring, bring, bring it up there. Bring it. Right, Tom, bring yeah, it. Yeah, put it up there. I'm going to read the question again. $300 on the line. You have uh, five seconds to answer the question, Thomas. The Phantom Menace is the first part of what famous series? Star Wars. The correct answer. Way to go, Thomas. Very much to you. Throw the hat on. Got you. Uh, got you. The dice cap is. It's not working out for you. Thomas, will Fred get this right or wrong? Fred's going to get it wrong. You're saying wrong. Let's see if you can increase your lead. The Phantom Menace is the first part of what famous series? Uh, Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera. Very good show. Thank you. You ever see that show? Uh-huh. Slowly, gently. These things, too. I got the full package. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he got it wrong. Way to go, yeah. Thomas. That's uh, it takes you up to thirteen hundred dollars. You made six hundred six hundred bucks off that question. It's a good thing there's only one dunce in each one. Okay. okay. Now, <laughs> tattoo. I asked Sarah, where on the body is a yarmulke traditionally worn? I think she's gonna get this right or wrong. I am gonna say she got it right. You think she got it right? All right. Yeah. Let's find out. See if we can get you some money. Where on the body is a yarmulke traditionally worn? Oh my God! I'm such a Jew. I know. <laughs> Right here. Right, there you go. <laughs> I am, you guys don't even know. You're going back to my roots. All right. Okay. It's a correct prediction. to go, Thank you for $1,100. Yeah. Thomas, here's the next question I asked to Fred. On the show Seinfeld, when George was accused of double dipping, what was he accused of doing? Do you think Fred got this right or wrong? What do you think, Thomas? He's got it wrong. You're saying wrong again? No, nah, he rides bulls for crying out loud. All right, loud. let's find out. On the show Seinfeld, when George was accused of double dipping, what was he accused of doing? I think having sex with two people. Mm. You ever do that? I don't know. What are you doing later? <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Ah, very good. He got it wrong. Way to go, Thomas. I even took a little Seinfeld. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm uh, dipping a chip and taking a bite, then dipping a second time is what George was doing <laughs> on that episode. Very good, Thomas. Nice job. You're up to 1600 bucks. Okay, now, Tattoo, we can get you some more money here. I asked Sarah in slang, what's a swirly? What's a swirly? Do you think she got this right or wrong? I think she got that one wrong. Think she got it wrong? Yeah. All right, let's find did. out. 300 bucks if you predicted this correct. In slang, what's a swirly? 
A swirly? That sounds like something naughty that you shouldn't be talking on public television, my friend. So, Sarah, if you were to perform a swirly on the microphone, what would you do? <laughs> wow, that just sounds like the tree thing again. Well, can we do that on public television? <laughs> yes. <laughs> she got it wrong. That's the wrong answer, Patsy. Way to go. Another $300 for you. Um, a swirly, it's a slang term. It's when you stick someone's head in the toilet and flush it. Yeah, that never happened to me in high school. Okay, all right. Here's the last question for you, Thomas, to Fred of the round. I asked Fred, what event made Linda Tripp famous? You have 1,600 bucks, Tattoo's got 1,400. You got a nice $200 lead here. You can open it up. He got it wrong. He Fred, got this Fred one wrong? got it wrong. Yeah. He doesn't know Linda Tripp. No. All right, let's find out. <laughs> what event made Linda Tripp famous? Uh, turning in Monica Lewinsky for cheating with the President of the United States of America. She was, she was part of that scandal. Yes, she was. She, what would she look like, Linda Tripp? Oh, you don't want to look at her. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got it right, Thomas. He yeah. knew that one. You didn't predict that one correct. Now, this is a very important situation here, Tatu. We have Fred, uh, this is the last question of the round for you. Now it's to Sarah. Now you're down by 200 bucks. If you predict this correct, you're gonna take the lead for Wager of Death. So this is very important here for the, the wagering in the last round. I asked her, the zodiac symbol for Libra is a set of what? Think she got this right or wrong? I think she knows about the scale. She's a little off balance herself, but I oh. think she knows so about the scale. You're gonna say right? All right, for the lead, let's find out. The zodiac symbol for Libra is a set of what? <laughs> oh, um, the zodiac set of Libra books or something? Set of aren't books? They, aren't they supposed to be smart? Well, what, what zodiac sign are you? I'm a Leo. Arr. That's a lion. Ah, can't you just tell because I have such a mane that I maintain in a ponytail? <laughs> <laughs> she got that wrong. I'm sorry, Tatsu. She got it wrong. The correct answer is a set of scales, also called a balance, but a set of scales. So that was a crucial point there. You didn't get a chance to take the lead. You have $1,400, though. Yeah! Nothing wrong with that. But Thomas has got $1,600. Oh, 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 oh. When we return, Tatsu and Thomas will be making a final prediction on a question I asked Sarah, Fred, and Susie. I asked them, in slang, what is a road apple? Stay tuned because one of our players will be deep in doo-doo in our final round. The Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back. Tatu and Thomas, here's the scoop. During the break, each of you secretly chose one of the three people out on the street, made a prediction as to whether they were right or wrong, and wagered an amount of money not to exceed the total you now have. Close game, Tatu, you got $1,400, but Thomas has got $1,600. Those two dust caps came in handy for him. Now remember, only the winner keeps the cash, which means everything rides on the final question of the show. Here's a question I asked to Sarah, Fred, and Susie. In slang, what is a road apple? Okay, now Tatu, uh, you had a tough time with the dunce cap today. And uh, you're only trying by $200, so who do you want to see? I am going with Susie. You're going with Susie, all right. Now Thomas, how about you? You're also going with Susie. All right, nobody picked uh, Sarah or Fred, so we're gonna say bye to them. And Tattoo, if you win some money today, what are you gonna, what are you gonna buy? It's going to me, baby. You're gonna buy some stuff for yourself. Thomas, how about you? Motorcycle, baby. Chicks love the bikes. All right, well, good luck to both of you. We only have one clip for the rest of the show. It all comes down. All the money comes down to one clip, and it's Susie's. Let's watch. In slang, what is a road apple? Oh, it's not slang. It is absolutely uh, 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 animal droppings from a horse or a cow. Mm -hmm. That's the right answer. I wasn't even sure of that one. That is the correct answer. Now, Tattoo, you have Susie. You got 1400 bucks. You're trailing right now. She got it wrong, or she got it right, excuse me. What did you say she would do? I was sure she would get it wrong. Oh, uh, no. How much did you wager your $1,400? You didn't go all, all of it. Oh, she oh. did. Takes her down to zero. Oh, my God. Oh, there might not be any spending on you. Now, Thomas, there's a motorcycle here on the line here. You had Susie. She got it right. 1600 bucks on the line. What'd you say, buddy? Ah, I hope you didn't wager at all. I hope there's something there for a down payment on a bike, Thomas. Oh, <laughs> he went for all of it, folks. We have a double zero game. There is no winner. That's it. We don't know who won the game. Oh, my God. All right, so, no doubt. Sam, Sarah, and Fred do it during the credits. We'll see you next time. In slang, what is a road apple? I would say some sort of dead meat product that would be used in the kitchen later. In slang, what is a road apple? Uh, it's, I think it's the same thing as a road kill, something that's just dead on the side of the road. You ever hit anything with your car and kill it? No. <laughs> <laughs>